Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the CD Guy, Johnny Z here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel, and today, I'm going to be ranking the four KISS 78 solo albums from worst to best, and then at the end, I'm going to look back and create a 10-song ultimate KISS album out of the best tracks from each record. First off, just a backstory on the origins of the four solo albums in 1978. By that point, the band were at their wits end with each other after filming the iconic and amazing Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. It's amazing and an incredible film. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's a cinematic masterpiece. And anyway, this was a last-ditch effort to keep the band together here. The prospect of the four solo albums was introduced in an attempt for each band member to get them out of their system, also to get away from each other, to spend some time in the studio without the other guys, and hopefully to make a boatload of money on four individual records. You know, they all sold separately, and so there's a possibility this could make a ton of money for Casablanca. But in execution, unfortunately, it was a massive misfire for the band, a financial disaster, and yielded four polarizing albums amongst the fans. And you know, the general consensus is that Aces is the best, Paul's the second best, and then Gene and Peter can fight over third and fourth place, but my ranking is a little bit different. Every KISS fan kind of has their own opinion on the four solo records, but this is just my personal ranking here, so with that in mind, coming in at number four, I gotta go with Gene's record. You know, it's just a mess, in my opinion. It's scattered, unorganized, an album full of ideas, some better and some worse. You know, probably some that sounded better on paper than they did in execution, but this record just doesn't seem to know what it wants to be, and it's very inconsistent. Simmons mainly played electric and acoustic guitars on the album, leaving the bass duties to Neil Jason, and the album features a ton of guest appearances by the likes of Joe Perry from Aerosmith, Bob Seger, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, uh, Donna Summer, and Cher. And the sound of this record, I think, can best be described as erratic, varying from pop to rock to choir and funk as well. And the track listing is interesting because you have good tracks on here, like Radioactive, which is great, Man of a Thousand Faces as well. And so then there's the re-recording of uh, See You Tonight, which pales in comparison to the original from Rock and Roll Over. And then, of course, you have the album closure here, uh, Gene covering Jiminy Cricket and When You Wish Upon a Star. Now, the reason behind Gene covering When You Wish Upon a Star is a great story, right? When Gene was a kid and can barely speak English, he, you know, was inspired by that song. So it is a great story, but in execution, it's just not a good cover, I'm sorry, and definitely not a good album closer either. So Gene's record has its moments for sure, but for me, is my least favorite by far. So coming in dead last at number four, gonna go with Gene's solo record, just my least favorite personally. Next up at number three, I'm going to go with Paul Stanley's record uh, from 78 here, and Paul's is not a bad album. You know, most people would probably have it ranked second best behind Aces, right? But, and it, it does sound the most like a Kiss record out of the four. And I could never take this album personally because it just feels like Paul trying to write and failing to write a hit song over and over and over again. And lacks the personal touch that my top two have. But that said, it's the only of the four albums to feature all original material. And tracks like Tonight You Belong To Me, um, you know, and Love In Chains are fantastic. So I'd be lying if I said it didn't have its moments. But it's not an album I reach for all that often. And if I were looking for, you know, Paul tracks that were in the style of Kiss, of course, in the Kiss catalog, there are so many better options. Number two, this is where I'm gonna lose people, but I'm gonna go with Peter's record here. This is probably my biggest Kiss unpopular opinion, you know, contrary to the general perception of these solo albums, I actually love Peter's record, you know, a lot. I really enjoy this album quite a bit, and most would have this ranked dead last, and I understand why, you know, especially if you were, you know, a kid in 1978, and you went out and you saved up to buy, you know, one of the four LPs, and you bought Peter's, maybe Peter was your favorite member, and you, you know, were thinking it was going to be in a style of Kiss, and you were disappointed when you turned it on, and it was a jazz R&B style record, you know, that's totally understandable. It does sound the least like a Kiss album out of the four, and yet that's probably what I love the most about this record, is that it's super unique, you know, it's not just supposed to sound like another Kiss record. You know, these solo albums should be indicative of, you know, each individual member, their influences, and their style, and Peter always brought more of a jazz R&B vibe to his music, a bit of soul as well, and so this album is a great showcase for that, you know, a great showcase for the side of Peter's influences that maybe were a bit restrained on his Kiss uh, studio tracks, you know, with the band, and so I love this album for its uniqueness, I think it's a lot of fun to listen to, and all things considered, I think it's aged really well, you know, probably better than Paul's or Gene's as far as I'm concerned personally, and, you know, if you go into this record understanding that it's not going to sound anything like a regular Kiss album, then there's actually a lot of great underrated tracks on here, you know, stuff I love, like I'm Gonna Love You, You Matter to Me, Tossin' and Turnin', Don't You Let Me Down, 
uh, Kiss the Girl Goodbye, Hooked on Rock and Roll, and the great album closer, I Can't Stop the Rain. Great ballad there by Peter to close things out. I love Peter's vocals on this album. You know, he always had a great raspy rock and roll voice, but it works in this setting too. And honestly, this might be the one 78 solo album that I listen to the most. And coming in at number one, surprise, surprise, gotta go with Ace Frehley's album here. An absolute classic, right? Most people who have this at number one, and I absolutely agree with that consensus. You know, Ace's is the best record by far, and, you know, definitely the most well-rounded out of the four records. It's a fun listen from beginning to end and probably has the most re-listenable qualities to it, although I go back and forth between this one and Peter's, which one I listen to the most. Uh, Ace really came into his own as a solo musician here and a performer on this record, which is really interesting considering that he refused to sing on Kiss albums up until Love Gun in 1977, and here he is in 78. You know, he's playing all the instruments on this record for the most part, except for the drums, Anton Fig drums on this record. Um, you know, and Ace is you know, on lead vocals for all these songs, and I think the success of this record probably has something to do with, you know, why Dynasty was such a Ace-dominated album, right? He really had come into his own by that point, and you could tell here that Ace was much more confident in his abilities, and that really does shine through on tracks like Rip It Out, Speeding Back to My Baby, Snowblind, Ozone, What's On Your Mind, of course everyone knows New York Groove, very successful cover here by Ace, probably his best known track even to this day. I'm in Need of Love, Wiped Out, and Fractured Mirror to close things out. This was produced by Eddie Kramer and Ace Frilly. And, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, those tracks, those real standouts for me, the guitar work is great as well, and... You know, it shows how far Ace had come in such a short period of time from making his, you know, lead vocal debut on Shock Me in 1977 on Love Gun to making an entire solo album in 1978 full of great material that really does put it over the top for me. And like I said, at the end, I would be compiling my favorite tracks, taking the best of all four albums and putting it into a 10-track Kiss record here. The ultimate Kiss album, if they were to have made a record in 1978 here. And so you guys can see my track listing right over here. Coming in at number one, kicking things off, we gotta go with Rip It Out. Number two, Love and Chains, Paul Stanley. Number three, Tossin' and Turnin', Peter Chris. Number four, Radioactive by Gene. Number five, Tonight You Belong to Me by Paul. Number six, Hooked on Rock and Roll by Peter. Number seven, New York Groove, of course, by Ace. Number eight, Man of a Thousand Faces by Gene. Number nine, Snowblind by Ace. And then closing things out with that great ballad, I Can't Stop the Rain by Peter. Definitely a bit unrealistic, right? They definitely would not give Peter Chris three songs on the album. But when it comes to some of my favorite tracks, I definitely had to give prominence to some of the Ace and Peter material in that ultimate, you know, track listing for a hypothetical 78 solo album that they all made together. And so when it comes down to it, yes, I do prefer, you know, Ace and Peter's above Gene and Paul's. And you know, probably the biggest unpopular opinion here is that I didn't have Peter's dead last, but I love that record here, and so if I were to have made a, uh, you know, a complete Kiss album, a complete studio album out of those solo records, it would probably look something like this. So that wraps up this video here, ranking the Kiss 78 solo albums from worst to best. You guys can see my ranking right over here. Maybe my two and three are a bit controversial. Not really sure how you guys feel about that, but be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We are so close to 3,000 subs, so if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. It is greatly appreciated, and be sure to turn on the bell for notifications so you don't miss a new upload. Also, be sure to let me know down in the comments what is your favorite of the 78 solo albums. I definitely want to hear from you. And until next time, it's the CD guy, Johnny Z, signing off. Take care, everybody.